Here we go. Author Richie Norton once said, don't worry, you'll find your message in your mess. Allow me to set the scene. It was the morning of my sixth birthday. My alarm clock was ringing in, my, in the side of my ear, forcing me to wake up. Everyone had told me that turning six was a big deal, but honestly, I didn't, I didn't know what they were, they were saying. I looked the same as I did two days ago, and nothing was different. I was the same height, same hair color, nothing was changing. But no little did I know something was stirring inside of me. I just didn't know it yet, but who would have? I was six, after all. For my birthday treat every year, my parents and I would take a trip to Sioux Plantation. This place was a magical place for me, almost like Disneyland. It was filled with new experiences, fond memories, and most importantly, soup. Walking down that buffet line, I was carrying my kid's plate of tri-colored pasta, tuna casserole, and chicken noodle soup all by myself, feeling as strong and independent as ever. As we neared the end of the line, my stomach started to growl a little bit. And the cashier asked one simple but defining question, and that was, ma'am, how old is your daughter today? And to that she replied, she's five years old. Except I wasn't five. I was six. <laughs> Before any words could come out, come out of my mouth, my hands started shaking, thoughts raced across my mind. Did my mom just forget my birthday? Was I even six today? I became so doubtful of my own recollection, my thoughts, and even my parents' memory. Words started to form in my throat, but they stayed trapped down there. Devastation coursed through my mind, and without even a second thought, I blurted, Actually, I'm six. Immediately, heads turned. I heard scoffs, snickers from all the other customers around me. My mom's face was a picture worth a thousand words. She was shocked. She was embarrassed at her little kid that just embarrassed her in front of basically the entire restaurant. My own face started to feel hot as well. I had spoken up about what I wanted, but was it really worth it? Time resumed, but those feelings of guilt and embarrassment remained. That walk towards our dinner table was the slowest walk of my life. My feet trudged on the floor, and I couldn't help but just look down on my food the entire time. My parents were questioning me, why would you do that? How could you say such a thing? In public, too. The whole time at dinner, I looked down at my food. And before I, I could even touch my chicken noodle soup, my parents were ready to leave. For the first time, soup plantation wasn't just a fond memory to me anymore. That memory was honestly backlogged into the other side of my brain until I had to write this narrative speech. After this, words meant a lot, and I honestly saw the after effects of it all. The weight of a mere sentence had never occurred to me until that one moment. Since as a child, no one has ever stopped me from speaking my mind or living a life of truth. That night, I kept reliving this conversation over and over again, and started to think about how much those three words had really shifted the perspective of the entire day. Just as these words settled into the situation, I realized the impact of an individual's words on anyone's life. From this brief occurrence, began a lifelong mission, the goal to impact others through my own words and my example. I realized that speaking truth into an individual's life is worth so much. What I said and what I did mattered to everyone around me. My actions could honestly leave a lasting impact, even though it took one really, really embarrassing moment to do so. Speaking my own truth and being unafraid of what the world thought became such an important aspect to the rest of my life. It's been quite a long time since I dined at Sea Plantation for my sixth birthday dinner. 
but this experience has stayed with me through the years. Even though the content of my actions have obviously changed, my goals towards speaking up and speaking out remain the same. And as the buffet line I call life continues, I can't help but recall that painstakingly honest yet transformative exclamation. So all I have left to say is, don't sweat it. You'll find your message in that mess. Thank you.